I'm very happy to be back and to talk about portfolios again with you. And we've already touched on some of those, uh, some of the concepts that I'm going to talk about um, in this morning's session. And it was really, really good to hear a lot of the ideas that you will see also in my presentation and then going further uh, throughout the rest of the program as far as I can tell from the abstracts. And um, what I'm planning on doing today is that I'm going to share a story with you of a student on an internship and we'll use that as anchor point to then look at and dissect it a bit of what does that actually mean for work integrated learning and the use of portfolios before we go into a bit of experiences and sharing of ideas of um, what you have already done, um, what you might be interested in doing and where it can take us. And also asking, of course, the big question, do you see portfolios as being important uh, for work integrated learning? And of course, with my role at Catalyst, I'm talking primarily about Mahara, which is an open source e-portfolio system for which I'm the project lead. And a lot of you here in the room, at least as long as you're in New Zealand, um, have Mahara at their own universities in one form or another, and therefore might already be familiar with it. Um, I'm not going to show you actual examples today because I really would like to focus on the idea of portfolios, the portfolio thinking and looking into how that can fit into the work integrated learning because the important aspect for us, um, especially when we want to help students along the way, is to transition to the world of work. We are in the market of transitioning students from being dependent learners to becoming independent learners. And so of course that has a lot of implications for an organization, be that a university, polytechnic, ITO, or anybody else uh, working with students. And this is the story of Esther, who is or who was an intern in the central e-learning team at Monash College in Melbourne. And she interned between September and December of last year. And during that time, she was asked to keep a reflective journal. Every week, she needed to write a reflective report. And during her first week, she actually needed to write a reflective report every single day. And that helped her supervisor and also mentor to stay on top of what she was doing, what she had done on that day or then during that week, uh, what she was planning on doing, what experiences she had, and also get a better idea of her state of mind, so how she was feeling. Of course, because she was at Monash College at the time, her supervisor and also mentor were directly in the institution, so they could have done that face to face. But as you might also know, sometimes seeing interns or talking to everybody every single day is not really possible or to, um, not very easy to do, and then having hallway conversations can also be quite tricky. So the reflective report afforded both Esther and also her supervisor and mentor to look at what she had done more on their own time and also then look back at previous weeks and not just at an immediate feedback, but also um, look at what have you done between week one and week five or between one and week six, how much have you grown, how much have you learned, which would not have been so easy had it only been um, verbal reports um, because then you kind of forget about it, nostalgia comes in even after a few weeks, you, you kind of make things all look a bit nicer than they might have been or draw them a bit darker than they have been. And so the weekly reflections were a really good way for her to also look back at what had she learned and how much has she grown. And it was the first time that Esther had written a reflective journal before she started her internship at Monash College, she had no idea what that meant. She had not written a diary or personal journal before. And so what Monash College had done together with for her and the other interns was uh, give an introduction. And not just an introduction to the technology which they were using, which was Mahara, but in particular also an introduction to what does it mean to keep a reflective journal? Why do we want you to reflect on a regular basis? What would, we like to uh, what would we like you to include in it? Because oftentimes reflective journals are more summaries and we kind of really want to get, draw out the opinions, what they have learned and, and also think back, go beyond the superficial. And um, after that introductory session, a colleague of hers then was also available throughout the internship to answer questions in regards 
to keeping a portfolio, the reflective journal, how she was doing. And so over the entire internship, over all these reports, she always received feedback from her supervisor and sometimes also mentor or the uh, director of the program. And that was one component that she really uh, cherished a lot because that way she knew that people were reading it. Oftentimes when you write a personal journal, of course it is for yourself, but a learning journal I find is oftentimes really enhanced by sharing it with others and um, getting that feedback hearing from others that the exp uh, um, hearing from them what the experiences were and, and how they also see them. Because she could get additional tips from them, additional encouragement, the mentor and supervisor could celebrate her successes with her. And she kept all of that in her journal so that she did not lose it. And now that she's finished her internship, she hasn't kept up with the reflective weekly reports but she's still keeping her journal just on a more irregular basis because she found it really useful for her to kind of reflect on what she had done and how that also improved her work. So it helped her get better at her job because she didn't just do her job on road, but really looked into, well, what could I improve? What have I already done really, really well? And now she is a uh, part-time assistant um, learning analytics developer at uh, Monash College and continued right after her internship in that organization, furthering the um, work there. Besides her, um, besides her journal, she also kept a portfolio with errors that she had come across during her work. And she said this was really useful because she recorded what went wrong in her work and then also how she solved it. And now she can share that with other students who are coming after her in the internship so that they get a better starting point and don't have to start from scratch again. So that was one story that can stand for many in the area of uh, work integrated learning, in particular internships and um, the use of portfolios. And so what I'd like to go into now is kind of dissect this a bit and look at the various components that form part of that story. And so here's a infographic diagram that um, we developed with uh, researchers in Australia and the United States as part of the Field Guide to ePortfolio that, um, that was published by Abel and AAC and U. And um, there we have four pillars which help students come from that or get from that dependent learner into the independent learner stage in order to develop their career thinking and also employability skills. The four pillars are stakeholders, work integrated learning, branding and professionalism. So under stakeholders, that is where you find yourself quite a bit. Higher education, further education, or in general tertiary education, we have the students, the educators and management. All of them need to be on board with the experiences, need to know why it is being done, how they can play their role, what part they are playing. But of course, without the industry partners, we can't really do anything because we need somebody um, to integrate um, the learning with and to have that work experience. So the employers are, as stakeholders also very important. And of course, here we are talking primarily about work integrated learning. And that can be the authentic experiences that we've heard earlier today. Um, and also classroom experiences where assessment is um, regarded as work experience in particular, for example, in medicine or in other areas where real world activities are baked into the courses. And branding is also very important um, because it is a self-promotion for the student um, where they can showcase what they have done, how well they have done it, and um, also promotion of the students for the organization that they are at, because you as tertiary organizations can showcase them on your own websites. You can attract students that way to join your programs because they see what you're doing, how you're supporting the students, not just in their current studies, but also to help them get the career that they want. And of course, it is also an institutional promotion because kind of all of that flows into each other and uh, promotes the organization in general. All of that then in a way also flows directly into the professionalism because when the students are on internship or any other work integrated uh, learning activities, they learn valuable skills. 
they can make use of their academic skills, so the subject areas that they studied, um, but they can also learn what is oftentimes still called the soft skills and um, make use of them, see how they work, and also gain insight into how workplaces work and how to work in a team, how to collaborate, um, how to speak with others, how to manage time and so on. And of course, one big thing that was mentioned earlier already as well is lifelong and life-wide learning. That is also very important in portfolio work and um, looking at a person as a learner that learns throughout life and not just for a particular purpose. And the portfolio also helps um, just get away from the standard resume, which still has its place, but it can enhance it very well because experiences are being displayed. Um, the students can talk about um, what they have done, how they have done it. They can provide the evidence around it, um, therefore making it possible for somebody looking at their resume portfolio, employability portfolio, to get a better idea of who they actually are. So all of that flows into and supports graduate attributes which can be built into an e-portfolio, and all of that then supports the career thinking and employability of a student. And so how can the portfolio help with that? Well, a portfolio can display the passion of a student, whether they are cooking, whether they are building, whether they are programming. You can see through the evidence that they are showing how passionate they are. Um, because they can put in pictures and video and therefore you see them during their work or you experience what they have been doing. Um, they can also be very creative because not everything needs to be written. Um, they can show what they have done. Unfortunately, we cannot have smell on the internet yet, otherwise mm -hmm. it would be really, really good to sometimes, especially from um, becoming chefs to yeah, experience their creations a little bit better. Um, but for morticians who also started using portfolios, I, I think it is pretty good that we don't have smell there. Um, but that we can still see creativity um, through all the media that they can use in their portfolios. Of course, sometimes there is more creativity possible than in others. So if students already work towards a registration, for example, um, nursing registration, teacher registration, then oftentimes they work with templates um, in order to go towards that registration portfolio and really have all the components and also ensure privacy, of course. And all of that then, they can display their experiences. And they don't just talk about them, but they show them to us. That is what a portfolio makes out. Um, where all these elements are nicely woven together, they are still distinguishable, they can be seen, and they form the entire big picture of it. Now, there are lots of elements important for that, and from our experience listening to other stories, one of the biggest components is scaffolding. Um, it doesn't really work when somebody is being asked to create a portfolio, but doesn't really know what it means to create a reflective journal, what um, elements should be in the portfolio. Scaffolding is very important, in particular at the start of working with portfolios, but then also throughout an entire program. And um, like with any other activities uh, that are given to students. And that scaffolding can take many different ways. Um, we've seen template creation, uh, workshops, longer workshops, shorter workshops, workshops with students, teaching students, lots of different possibilities. And it should be integrated into a program. Um, you might have had the experience if you ask students to do something that is not in the program, that it's a bit harder to do that and that it's then regarded as burden. So if the portfolio is integral part of an internship of other work integrated learning experiences that usually works better because they it is not this extra thing that I have to do besides um, will but it is part of it and therefore really helps um, integrating it that so that the students can't wriggle out of it and also see the benefits which is oftentimes only at the end of the experience and not right at the start. Feedback is another component that is extremely important in portfolio work, I think, and also in general for the internship and uh, work, because students should be getting feedback throughout their program um, in order to get that in a timely manner so that an instructor or an employer could intervene mm -hmm. if something is going wrong, if um, they are being triggered by an 
by an event um, if they're struggling, but also to show, hey, you've done something really, really great and not to celebrate that with them after 12 weeks or 16 weeks, but kind of do it right when it happened so that the students are more motivated to then continue on that same path or take themselves a little step further, kind of push themselves a bit more so that it is really part of the general weekly reflections that feedback is given, like in Esther's case. And in her case, it wasn't always very long feedback. Sometimes it was just two sentences, but they were very encouraging in order to help her continue on her path or go a slightly different route. And technology, of course, these days also plays an important role, and that shouldn't get into the way. That's why a lot of people oftentimes create templates to help students um, get started more easily. Uh, but it all comes down to what you need to do and the technology should be there to fit the purpose. One aspect that I hadn't mentioned yet was lifelong learning. That, of course, is something that we'd like to instill in our students. But it's oftentimes very hard because after the will activity, they might not have a second one, so they might not be forced or encouraged to create and or continue with their portfolio, but it is then up to them to continue with that practice. And so they are really interested to hear if you are having any experiences in that regard and how that can also be done. And one possibility, of course, is to integrate portfolios or work integrated learning activities even more into the curriculum and make it part of their regular work, make it part of their coursework, and not just for that particular time frame. And so I'm all ears <laughs> to hear from you whether you've already been doing something or planning on doing something. <laughs>